Hello everyone and welcome to Isaac News where we are here to answer your questions. Before we get into our fun fact of the day, you might notice this piece of tech behind me. You probably won't notice it and when I sound, well, good thing we do a sound check in the first 30 seconds, we're live. So thank you to everyone who's with us. I'm going to start off today with a poem because during a move, during this trying time for everyone in the world, I think this poem could really help. And to any of poetry experts, if this isn't a poem, please let me know. And if you are just joining us, remember to comment hashtag live or hashtag replay if you are watching this video. So that way we know who's here and uh, that way we can make sure we enter you into the next drawing. And commenting, sharing, and liking is also how you become a top fan. And Nina, hi Isaac, love your backdrop. Thank you, it is actually the color green, but I found out a way to change it. So you guys are gonna be seeing a lot of different things today. And please give me your honest feedback. We're working on getting more studio lighting. So it's not just this, but please let me know. Thank you, Sarah, for being here. Catherine, appreciate it. Y'all are just amazing. Thank you, Alf, I appreciate it. So before we get into our fun fact, here's this poem called Change. Change, a sometimes lonely word. It speaks of being awkward, strange, unfamiliar. A fearful word. Changing is hard work for a human being. It can be painful and unpleasant, even when it leads to something good, like independence, self-reliance, or greater happiness. We do not change easily. Change hurts. But change can be healthy. There is no growth without change and no life without growth. So with that in mind, thank you for being here. Thank you, Charm. Hey, Andrew, thank you for being here. And we'll get into our fun fact of the day. And I wanted to think more about the heart. And so that's what our fun fact is about. It comes from Healthline. And fun fact, the average heart is the size of a fist in a fully grown adult. And the heart beats around 115,000 times a day. And if you wonder how much blood is that, I'm glad you asked you. Because the, that is an equivalent of roughly 2,000 gallons of blood a day. We go through a ton of blood a day, and that's not an expression. We would literally go through, wait, no, that's pounds. Ooh, gosh, it's probably more than a ton of blood a day. Ooh, gosh. Anyway, so that is our fun fact, and I am going to be handing it over to LSD, Life Sensei's dad, because he has a very special review for everyone today. So with that, you ready, LSD? I am ready. Well, then we'll take it all right there, over there. Thank you all. We'll be back in just a minute. Well, good evening, LSD fans. As uh, Life Sensei said, it is time for the one, the only LSD. So, in response to last week's question about uh, Ed M4, I thought I'd just review a little few things about that this week. First off, I'd like to say that civilians cannot own M4s. They can own the M4 platform, which is also the AR, it's called the AR-15. And for those people out there who shall remain anonymous in Washington, D.C., uh, AR does not stand for automatic rifle. It stands for Armalite. So it actually is the platform of the weapon. So civilians cannot legally own an automatic weapon. You can own a semi-automatic weapon, but you cannot own a automatic weapon. That being said, if you want to upgrade or do some changes to your AR-15, that makes sense. Every person has their own, uh, mm, measurements, I guess we'd say. And so it only makes sense that you want to customize your weapon to make it, to give it the best feel and best fit to do the job that you have to do. The good news is AR-15s are immensely uh, customizable. There's so many ways that you can customize it that it's it's just too much to name. Alright, so the components are actually cheap and you don't have to spend a lot of money on, on if you're gonna put new ones on there, different kinds of things. So the biggest thing that you want to take away from is you don't have to 
trick out your AR-15 like that. All right, so by that, I mean, you could see all the things that are on this one. It's got a, a big uh, pistol grip, which that one's okay. You've got a flashlight up in front and you've got a ACOG, what's called an ACOG, that's an advanced combat optic scope or uh, uh, advanced combat optic something. Anyway, so that being said, you don't need all that stuff. All right, what you can do though, what I highly suggest for any M4 or uh, AR-15 platform person is you need, let me get rid of this little photo, you need two little things. Okay, the first thing is this, all right? This is from Gerber and it is a called the Gerber Effect. It's got six little tools on there and it is, it is immensely helpful when you're trying to sight in your weapon or clean your weapon, take care of that. The best part of this from my, my, my thing as an as a NCO in the Army is this little baby right here. This is a front sight post. Okay, you, you change your front sight post with it, it's immense. You can pick it up for about 110 bucks off of Gerber.com, but if you want to go to some other sites. That's expensive. Yeah, or you could, you know, you could join the army and for 14 years and they finally give you one. That, that helps too. Okay. okay. The other thing is you can be prepared to spend about 50 bucks on a good cleaning kit. All right. So cleaning kits are, you, you got to have a clean weapon. Your weapon is, the cleaner your weapon is, the less chance it's going to backfire. All right. But if you want to spend money on an optic, Okay. Whoopty, where are we at here? There we are. There we are. You can get this lab bad boy for about $30 from the Amazon. All right. And this is what I have on mine. It works perfect. And it is it is a green dot sight. I don't think we can get it. If we could see it, I don't know if I can yep, get it. We're good. So anyway, you can. it helps you to use the open eye approach. All right. So with the open eye approach, guess we're trying to go all right so we're getting we're getting cut off we'll talk a little longer next time and i appreciate all of you guys and just remember if it's fit to review i will review it all right that being said until next week god bless you guys god bless the united states of america and this is lsd checking out <laughs> thank you so much lsd appreciate it isn't he a hoot charm says gerber no i'll never look at baby food the same way that's true mm-hmm and hi to you too, Rhonda. Thank you for being here. Well, welcome to the dojo, everyone. Oop. All right, cut out for a slight, quick second. But we are here to answer your questions now, and we got a good amount today. We have 10. So our first question of the day comes from Dr. Schrolls, and he says, as the world's leading shoeologist, it is a real science, at least I think it is, I have a question. Do you always put on your left shoe or right shoe? And does that coincide with you being a left-handed or right-handed? What do you think? Thanks so much. I'm a lefty and always seem to put my left shoe on first. Well, I put on both shoes always because otherwise I'll trip. But to answer your question more specifically, uh, I would say, gosh, you know, I, I never really pay attention. Now I'm going to notice that all the time. Uh, but if I had to guess, I think it would be whichever one's closer because I'm not a lefty or a righty. Whoa, look at the outline. <laughs> uh, you get uh, whichever one's closer because I can be like a sloth when it comes to putting on my shoes. Which one are, would y'all do? Do you know how, what shoe you put on first, your left or your right? And if so, are you a left hand or right hand? Please comment below. Melinda's here. Hey, Melinda, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Always good to have more people. That's how we shine the light. Charm, you slide into your shoes like a boss. That's awesome. I do, I, I can just picture it right now, Charm. I can just picture you sliding into them. Alf, you're a lefty and always a lefty. Impressive. All right, next up from Dr. Anna Mall. What is the most dangerous snake in the world and how would your views viewers answer, I'm assuming? Uh, the most dangerous snake in the world, according to me, well, that's kind of subjective, because you could go by which snake kills the most, which is the most venomous, which is the most poisonous. But for me, I just like the black mamba. I think that would be the most dangerous, because it has very toxic poison or venom. There is a difference, but Melinda... Oh, yeah, wait. Really quick. So, uh, that is what I would say. And what would y'all say is the most poisonous or most dangerous snake? 
And back to the previous question, Melinda, you will always put your right shoe on and you're a righty and your husband's a lefty. Interesting. I could see that. Yeah, I forget about that. Thank you. So next up, and wait, Charm says, all snakes are going to be dead in my way. I agree. Yes, I'm not the biggest fan of snakes. Uh, I mean, they live, leave me alone. I'll leave them alone. But, you know. And Melinda says, can't hear you or the questions, but I'll check back when I'm home. Just left the farm. Can you guys hear me? I think everyone can hear me. Uh, doesn't matter. All snakes are bad. <laughs> I agree, Catherine. I agree. Alf snakes are an important part of our ecosystem. You can kill snakes. Yes, you can no. kill snakes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, we, we totally can kill snakes. No, no. Yeah, whatever. Snakes kill mice and rats and all sorts of things that get in your house. So True, but they can get in your house as well. Okay, thank you, good. Anina. If I, can, I appreciate that. We can hear you. Andrew, thank you. I appreciate that. So, moving on to our next question. But the snake debate is still at large. Please tell me which snake you think is the most deadly. Uh, the best French fries from Inquisitor, restaurant and or style. Best French fries. Okay, are we talking strictly French fries or are do curly fries? Are we talking waffle fries? Because if we're going for French fries, the only place I think that sells good French fries to me is McDonald's. If we're going strictly French fries. But if we're including other Chick-fil-A waffle fries in uh, Polynesian sauce, that's difficult to beat. Arby's curly fries, I love those. And Andrew is loves fries as well, I'm sure. <laughs> but you like the pub fries from Wendy's Charm. See, I think those would be good too, but are pub fries French fries? Are all fries French fries? This actually is an intense actually, debate. No. Not all fries no, are French fries. French fry actually refers to the cut of a potato. Interesting. That is the French cut. Oh. So French fries have nothing to do with the French. Hmm. Well, all right then. So pub fries could be. All right. So next up from do, do, Lucky Ooh. Charms is cereal soup. Why or why not? Thanks for your show each Sunday. That is a great question. I feel uh, soup I feel like I've had that question. It's a good question, and I love it. But uh, I would say cereal is not soup. Soup, uh, it has to be hot. So I would say cereal is closer to being like uh, gazpacho, uh, if anything. And that is why, because soup has to be served hot. So oatmeal would be closer to soup than cereal is, and soup would be closer to gazpacho. So that is what I would say. And it's my pleasure to do this show each Sunday. Y'all make it amazing. Next up. Oh, wait a minute. Charm says that the pub fries have bacon. Ooh, I'm in. I'm in. And you feel connected to Lucky Charms? I do love Lucky Charms. But i got to be honest, I'm not a fan of the white pieces. But I also don't only like eating the marshmallows. So it's an unhappy medium. All right. Next up, from Foodie. How do you feel about putting pineapple on pizza? I think it's disgusting. Ah. Uh, but pizza is savory, okay, unless you're having a sweet pizza. Like, I don't mind pineapple on pizza if it's supposed to be a fruit pizza. But, like, pineapple and ham, I hate mixing savory and sweet. Oh, if y'all enjoy it, good for you. But for me, I'm like, if I'm eating meat, I want to eat meat. I don't want to eat sweet meat. That's just weird to me. And I hate when people say, just pick it off. The pineapple juice sinks mm. into the crust. So now the whole pizza is sweet because my family loves it and I'm the odd duck out. What about you guys? Pineapple on pizza, yay or nay? Uh, Lorraine, you like yummy pineapple and ham? Come on. Oh. <laughs> what about figs on pizza? It, yeah. In the right with the right kind of pizza, sure. No. Uh, yes, Catherine. Yes, no mixing savory and sweet. And charm, you don't like pineapple on pizzas either. Thank you. My audience members. Hey, whoever doesn't uh, like it, out of the running. Andrew, it sounds like you've thought too much about pineapple on pizza. You would not believe how much I can overthink something. And yes, Catherine, no pineapple on pizza. I hate that. Why? I mean, why would people do that? I don't even think the Hawaiians would have come up with it because I think, you know, a lot of people call it Hawaiian pizza. Did they come up with it? I don't know. Charm, you're smart. You are smart. Thank you. I know the answer. Next up from Hefe. What is your favorite kind of Mexican food? Quesadilla. I'd go with that. 
and ketchup. any people who like Mexican food will be mad at me because I like to put ketchup on my cheese quesadillas. Uh, I, I enjoy that. What else is really good is you get a cheese quesadilla and you put the cr chive and onion flavored cream cheese on every slice as you eat it. That's just incredible. Mm. And in regards to pizza, Anna says that's her favorite kind. Oh, and Al says Hawaii pizza came from Canada. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Well, uh, nothing to do with Hawaii. Favorite kind of Mexican food? Quesadilla. Can't go wrong with that. I do like burritos. Enchiladas are really good too, but quesadillas are so easy to make and I love them. And I can feel authentic making it in my house and until I put the ketchup on it. So, Diana, thank you for commenting. Hashtag live. Anyone else who's joining us, comment hashtag live or hashtag replay so that way we can know what we're doing, how we can do it better, and we know who you are and so that way we can make the show better for you. Anna has a question. Uh, yeah, it's her Diana. favorite pizza. Diana. 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 Sorry, I thought I heard Anna. My sister-in-law loves pineapple on a regular pizza with sausage. What is wrong with her? Uh, no, I'm sure she's a lovely woman. But, uh, yeah, not my kind of thing. Okay. Next up from Le... Okay, it's either Le George or La George. And I'm going to say it with the fancy way. Charm. Hashtag live and lively. I like that. Diana, you don't put ketchup on Mexican food, do you? I do. I really do. Uh, <laughs> and I work at a dojo in El Paso, and when I told them that, they're, they're authentic. Well, they pride themselves on their Mexican heritage, and so when I told them that, they covered their mouths, and they're like, oh, my you gosh. You improve the food. It's just what? <laughs> horrible food, Mexican food. What? Enchiladas are great. I like okay, queso and that I think it's called horchata. I like horchata, but that's a drink. Uh, but I, it's the spice. Like for me, I'm working on building my spice tolerance. And anyone who enjoys spicy food, go ahead and rate this. Where would you rate the spicy chicken sandwich from Chick Fil A? Because for me, I rate that like way up here, and mild at Taco Bell, like right there. So there's not much room to go. Uh, and Diana, no ketchup. Uh, but, sorry, back to you, La George. I'm sorry. <laughs> have I been to France? I have not been fortunate enough to go to France. My brother went to France with his then-girlfriend and then now my sister-in-law, and they enjoyed it a lot. I believe my dad went as well, and they got to enjoy the tour, see the sights. We. We. Uh, <laughs> <oui. laughs> so, no, I have not been to France, but I would like to go one day. Next up, from Billy Bob, how can I become a top fan on your page? Great question, Billy Bob. All you have to do is like and share and comment and do that consistently, and soon you will be a top fan. And if you are a top fan, that means we are working on ways to celebrate you. Like last week, we did a drawing for our top fans, and it was Horner Dudes who won. And so we're working on getting them their shirt, and as soon as we have our logos printed up and everything, I'll be wearing those during the stream. And yes, that I, that's how you become a top fan. Thank you for asking. And really quick, Charm says that she doesn't do spicy. I'm spicy enough on my own. <laughs> True, Charm, you are very spicy. And Al says, aren't tomatoes on Mexican food the same as ketchup? It's just like I mean, in a liquid sense. ketchup. Salsa is just chunky ketchup. <laughs> uh, someone go ahead and quote me on that. Salsa is just chunky ketchup. But before we get to our final questions, I'm going to go to our philosophy phrase of the day, which comes from Seneca, who said, as is a tale, so is life. Not how long it is, but how good it is, what matters. And so I just really enjoy that quote because I think a lot of us get caught up in living a long life instead of a good life. And right there, I mean, I've read long books that are just terrible, and I don't enjoy that, but I've read short books that are amazing, and that's how I would want my life to be, an amazing book instead of a long book. I mean, I wouldn't mind an amazing long book, but you guys get the drift. All right, so with that, we'll go back to your questions and get ready to wrap up. So, our ninth question comes from future employee. Do you have any good interview tips? Loads. So, arrive early. Make sure you know the right location because that will help a lot. For my interviews, showing up early, bring a folder with a notebook so that way you can write down what they're saying so that way they can see you're studious. I think also having an extra copy of your resume is great because 
resumes have been lost before the interview. And that just makes you look extra prepared. What else? Make sure you know how to listen by looking your interviewer in the eye. And don't look down at your feet. Try to avoid the phrase, um, when you're answering. And whatever you do, don't say one of your heroes is Hitler. That is always a good tip. So next up from Charm, wear your teeth if you have them. Yes, Charm, thank you. That is what I would say. If you want more tips, I'm happy to give more. But those are just standard ones I would say. Thank you. Next up from Too Far Away. As a military kid, how do you handle being far away from your friends? This is a great question, and it hits a lot for me. Uh, basically, Skype, FaceTime, that helps. If you can't FaceTime, writing letters is good. Another way is remembering that a goodbye in the military is not a forever goodbye because I've ran into all my friends I've made at least once in the military just from the moves. So that's always really good. Aside from that, look around and decide what you want. Do you want more friends? Because the more friends you make, the less time you're alone. But, you know, just enjoy it. But handling being so far away, that is pretty difficult. But for me right now, I attend a Bible study with some of my friends that I met in Missouri. I think, what was that now, nine years ago? Six years? Uh, Fourteen. Yeah, like four, well, 14 I mean, years? Has it been? Right, so I'm like about 12 years ago. So, yeah, charm, don't pop pimples. That's that's, that's really always a very advice. good advice, charm. Yes, that's very good advice. Uh, thank you. But that is how I handle being long distance from my friends. I hope that helps. And if you'd like anything more specific, please let me know. Thank you for the question. Next up, from what should it be? What would your eight-year-old self say to you now? I think he would say, man, you didn't get any taller. Uh, <laughs> I could see that. Uh, I could see him saying, did we ever beat that level in a video game? I could see, like, eight-year-old me, he was very sporadic. So if you think I'm sporadic now, you should have seen me when I was eight. Uh, and what would you say to your eight-year-old self? And what do you think your eight-year-old self would say to you? There's a lot. Hang on, actually, really quick. Dad, what do you think your eight-year-old self would say to you now? Don't ever chew tobacco because then <laughs> you don't have to quit chewing tobacco and you replace chewing tobacco with donuts. And once I did that, I never have, I've always had a hard time managing my weight. Hmm. So if I would never have started chewing, I would never have to quit chewing or replace it. Interesting. That's what I would okay. think I would have said. Okay. Mom, what do you think your eight-year-old self would have said? Nice and loud, please. Enjoy, enjoy life and don't take it so seriously. Enjoy life and don't take it so or seriously. Good. invest. Wait, that's what your eight-year-old self would say? I feel like that's what you would say to your eight-year-old oh, self. Think, yeah. But I don't know. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, okay, Charm, you said your eight-year-old self would be surprised at how cool you are at 67. They probably would be. I mean, you're, I mean, actually, I think they would say, I knew we could do it. But, yeah, I like that. So thank you. Please comment. What do you think your eight-year-old self would say? Because I have a ton of advice I would give to my eight-year-old self, but my eight-year-old self, I'm not sure what he'd say. Yeah, 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 that really didn't matter to me either. Next up, yeah. from Google, what's the best color to wear in the summer? Black. Oh, no. no. <laughs> if you like sweating, black. But uh, I think white isn't the best because you don't... Swimming leads to just embarrassing situations. I think a light blue. Yeah, really. Yeah, that's a good point. It really depends on what who you are. But I think for me, I think a light blue is pretty good. Maybe blue. I think that's a good color. Or a peach. Charm. You think yellow? Yes, yellow is a very summery color. Uh, see, to me, I always want to say red and black, but those are not the best colors in the summer unless you're wearing light colors because fall is always the time for like the more autumn-looking colors. But that is a great question. And to any fashion experts, please tell me, what do you think is the best color to wear in the summer? And also, before we get to our closing thoughts where I'm going to end the questions, I, do what, I will give one more reminder. Please remember to like and share and comment hashtag live or hashtag replay so that way we can make the show better for who's here and we can know who's watching. So that way we can make more content specialized for you. And Anina says red would work. Yes, I would agree. Yes, red is a very good color. I'm just not sure. It, it depends on the shade of red, I think. And Charm said 
not white. Dirt finds me when I wear white. True. I don't like wearing white because I, I spill things on myself no matter how many napkins I'm wearing. So that is what I would have. Also, really quick, before we get to our finals. Wow, this is dark. Okay. <laughs> For... Uh, we are working on getting a website up, and one piece of content that I am working on is getting both sides of the political spectrum to talk about certain issues for you. So that way you don't have to go watch the mainstream media, because my anonymous sources are watching the mainstream media, and they're giving their opinions on anything that you would like, from vaccines to voter rights to open borders, whatever you guys would like. And if that's interesting to you, please let me know, so that way I can get that set up as fast as possible. And if it is, what would you like them to talk about? And that would be great. Diana, you love the set. Thank you. So with that in mind, I am going to close us out with these thoughts. And please have an open mind with them. So for my closing thoughts, I want to uh, take the time to challenge us all to be open to change. As I read in the beginning, it's, it's very difficult to accept change, and it's very easy to harden our hearts and ignore them, saying, well, I know exactly what I'm doing. But I challenge you all to take the time this week to truly listen to what others are saying before judging them or before determining if what they're saying is true or not. Listen with an open mind. Don't do what we call defensive listening, which is where you're only listening to hear them mess up in something and then use it against them. So I want to thank you all. Last time, please remember to like and share so we can shine the light as much and as far as possible. And I will see you all same time next week.